More important factors for the sales comparison approach. The key to this approach is the availability of sales. The appraiser must be aware of the total market in the project area and consider all pertinent data and select those sales which have the least number of variables to consider. The appraiser is required to use a sufficient number of sales as a basis of value. If there's a lack of data in the immediate area, the appraiser must broaden the search to find sufficient data in similar neighborhood areas. The appraiser typically uses three comparable sales on the value analysis report. When searching and selecting comparable sales, there are several factors to consider, and below are some common factors. For example, sale date, location, use, size, zoning, and utilities. Also to be considered would be floodplain, school district, soil type, drainage, and others. So let's talk a little bit about finding sales. Practice and experience are immensely helpful when it comes to finding sales that are comparable to the whole parcel. It is helpful to mentor with someone who is good at this function. On the next slide, we're going to list some of the more common sources to find comp sales. The first ones we're going to talk about happen to be free. You can get uh, information from the county conveyance records. You can go to the county auditor's website. You can talk to local real estate agents. You can talk to appraisers who appraise in that area. You can look in your files for past previous appraisals, or you can talk to auctioneers. The next group that we're talking about costs money to join these data sources. Um, the multiple list service, MLS, is one, and another is called CoStar. Next, we need to discuss the verification of the comparable sales. Unverified comparable sales are raw data, which may or may not be correct. Here's an example. This is an unverified sale. We had source of information from the auditor records. We drove by the property and we checked county building and zoning records. And we found that this property sold for $1.2 million back in May 15, 2017. This information indicated that the property contained 120 acres or $10,000 an acre. We know that it's currently being farmed, uh, that its highest and best use is agriculture. We know that the property has no zoning classifications. There's no public utilities available to the property. The topography, it looks to be level. And we know that the current tax assessment is $10,000 an acre. But then we verified the sale. And after verification, it was determined that the actual size is 150 acres, not 120 acres and that the buyer and seller knew this at the time of sale, that the tax roll data is wrong, and the buyer currently enjoys a lower tax amount due to this oversight. So the price the buyer actually paid was based on 150 acres. So if you divide 150 acres into the $1.2 million sale price, the price per acre was actually $8,000 an acre and not $10,000 an acre. And that's why we verify sales so we have accurate information. Verification of each sale must occur with a party to the transaction. And typically that's going to be a buyer, a seller, or an attorney representing one of those parties. Verification is needed to develop an accurate description of the comparable sale. A description of the comparable sales must include relevant physical, legal, and economic factors and must include source and method of financing as required by regulation. And that regulation is Ohio Administrative Code. Uh, that is the section of the code that governs the Ohio Department of Transportation. And that code citation you're looking at is also mirrored in 49 CFR Part 24, Section 24.103. So no matter whether we have federal funding in the project or state-only funding in the project, the verification process remains the same. All right. Um, the minimum requirements of sales data sheets are located in section 4000.15 uh, subparagraph b2 of odot's real estate manual 
And this is typically called the 29 points of comparability. And here's what the, uh, this comes right from our uh, policy and procedure manual. So this is what it looks like. Eventually, the appraiser obtains a large group of sales. Each sale must be directly compared to the whole parcel, considering all differences between the sale and the whole. Those sales considered most similar, most representative, having the same or most similar highest and best use are selected, and it is these sales that are used in the valuation report. Next, we're going to discuss adjusting the comparable sales to the whole property. Each sale must be directly compared to the whole, discussing all differences between the sale property and the whole property. For those variables which warrant adjustments, positive or negative adjustments are made in dollar or percentage amounts. If a feature of the comparable is superior to the whole, then that comparable is adjusted down to make it equal to the whole. And if the comparable is inferior to the whole, the comparable is adjusted upward to make it equal to the whole. Elements of dissimilarity are explained and rationally supported. This is how the sales comparison approach works. However, with the value analysis report, we do not allow adjustments to be made as part of the report. So what we're going to show you now is an example of an adjustment grid. And the top, we've got the whole property to the left, and we have three comparables, comparables one, two, and three. And here are the sale prices of those comparables. They range from $175,000 to $360,000. And this is the size. The, the whole contains 42,000 square feet, and the comps range in size from 30,000 square feet to 50,000 square feet. And this is the price per acre. And to get this number, we divided uh, the square footage into the sale price. And these comps range from $5.83 per square foot to $7.20 a square foot. And next come the adjustments. First one we considered was sale date. The whole property is valued as of November 15, 2019. And sale one had a very similar date, so no adjustment was indicated. Sale two uh, was older in time, sold back in 2017, and was adjusted upwards 2.5%. And sale three uh, was a little more recent, sold in 2018, was adjusted upwards 1.5%. Financing, um, the, the comparables range from cash sale to conventional financing, and therefore no adjustment was warranted. Location, the, uh, the whole property is located in Eastwick, as is sale one. They are the same, no adjustment was indicated. Sale two was in Southridge, considered to be inferior, and therefore was adjusted upwards to make it equal with the whole. Sale three was located in Inverson, considered superior to the whole, and therefore it was adjusted downwards. Size. The whole contains 42,000 square feet, similar again to sale number one. Sale number two is much larger, containing 60,000 square feet, uh, and was adjusted upward 2% because of size regression. The larger something is, the lower its unit of value tends to be. Sale three was also larger, but not quite as large as sale number two, and was adjusted upward 1%. And so the total adjustments are shown. Uh, sale one had no adjustments, so it's zero. Sale two uh, had 14.5% in adjustments, and sale three had a negative 12.5% in adjustments which indicates value ranging from $6.25 a square foot to $6.68 a square foot. And this is a classic representation of what a sales adjustment grid looks like. So here's a question. How would you convert $6.25 per square foot into price per acre? Well, that's easily done by taking $6.25 a square foot and multiplying it by 43560 
that number is the number of square feet in an acre. And that calculation will show you that $6.25 per square foot is the same as $272,250 per acre. And we can also work backwards. If we wanted to convert that price per acre into a price per square foot, we would divide $272,250 per acre by 43,560 square feet in an acre to determine that it is the same as $6.25 an acre. Finally, we're going to talk about reconciliation. After the comparable sales have been adjusted to the whole property, there needs to be a reconciliation where the comparability of each sale to the whole is considered and which of the sales is most similar with an explanation as to why and a reasoning for the final value conclusion. All right, it is time for a knowledge check. <laughs> 